Okay everyone, it's bonfire night and uh, I've come to the local woods with a good friend of mine, Stokey Joe Bushcraft and we're doing an overnighter so we've just put the, the kettle on and we're going to we're going to have a brew we've had to chop some uh, some dead dead birch that a tree's fallen because it's absolutely sodden wouldn't have got the fire going any other way so uh, Joe's brought his uh, his bushcraft uh, saw, Ray Mays, oh, you can see it there, his Ray Mays saw. Hi everyone, so we're just settling down for now, we're going to get tea on in a bit, we're having uh, chicken curry and rice. Uh, so I've set up a fire in front of my tarp and I've configured the tarp so it's also a, a ground sheet. Uh, I'll show you in detail tomorrow how I've got it configured. Uh, as you can see these these loops, you know, the internal loops are perfect for hanging. You know the cane lamp or you know whatever. I've got a, another little torch hung up. So I say I'm out with Stokey Joe tonight. Bonfire night, 5th of November. I'll just turn you around and show you the fire now. Two and a half foot from the tarp. Uh, I say, them sparks and everything, not one iota. And the heat's bouncing up and around me. Go. Joe's just gone to get a stick so we can suspend the cooking pot and did you find one Joe? I found one but I need my saw to cut it off, you need a live one, everything's All right. rotten so, so I'll be back with yeah. one in a I say we've had to cut uh, a dead fallen tree to get some dry wood and, and split it because everything's just absolutely ringing wet so we've had to, if I bring you, I'll just show you a close up, move you to there. So that's a log that we've split, sawn up. I say it's dead standing, it must have fell about, oh, it's been there about a year and a half. So we've sawn it up and then split it uh, with Joe's splitting act. So. Okay everyone, we've just put the the curry and rice, uh, it's the army ration packs that you boil, boil up for a bit, uh, so this is tea on and what we've done, we've just uh, put a little notch in the, I'll just show you, just put a little notch just so the pan can't slip down. Okay. So we built the back of the fire up with some nice six inch logs now and I've put the logs behind to dry out as well. So we should we should have a fire in most of the night now. As I say, we've had to cut the dead standing wood to get the dry bits. And then once you get a bed of embers, put the wet ones round the sides and they'll dry out and then you can throw them on. All right then. Uh, so we're gonna have, that's gonna be our tea, chicken and rice. And then we'll settle down for the for the night. Okay everyone, there's tea. We're on the army curry and boiling a bag of rice. Should be perfect for setting us up for the night. Okay, we've got the fire roaring now. We've got a few big logs on there. Uh, 
I think she's uh, really, really in for the night now. It took a bit to get going actually. Uh, really had to chop the wood up into small pieces, filled the kettle up or the pot ready for uh, a brew. But we have a hot chocolate and the fire's well truly lit now. And we've just got it suspended. Show you on a little Y stainless steel rod. So it's just a little Y stainless steel piece. So there's the, the bush pot, I think it's called. So we're going to have a hot chocolate. And so there's the fire. There's the tart. A bit smoky. And it's kicking the heat right underneath. No problem at all. So I've got my hurricane lamp lit up. And I've got my foam mattress. I'll show you the So I've got two forms of insulation, so there's a ground sheet which is part of the tarp and I've got the 10mm foam mat and then I've got blow up air bed and then I've got a wool blanket on top of that and then I've got my wool blanket there which I'm going to throw over me. There's my hurricane lamp, and my rucksack, and my brew kit. There's Joe's, Ray May's, uh, saw, and that's how near the fire is. And it's kicking heat right into this tart, and it's well, it's really nice, really beautiful. You can feel the warmth. So that'll probably be it for tonight. Uh, we're gonna have our cocoa and now the rain stopped play. So Stokey Joe's just gone to his hammock, and I've decided to just watch a bit of uh, fire television. Just let the fire burn out. Now, put some big logs on so should get a few hours out of it. Um, I'm just sleeping in my wool blanket. Put my rucksack behind me and then I've put my pillow on the rucksack. Uh, I'm just going to let the, the hurricane lamp just stay until it runs out of fuel basically. So, so, okay everyone, this is Brav Outdoors, I'll see you tomorrow, I'll just show you the, the remus of the fire. We've got nice, uh, nice big logs on. So we should get a few hours out of that. Okay everyone, bye for now. See you in the morning. Bye. Well the fire kept in all night. We just uh, put a bit of water in the kettle for a brew. Joe's just splitting some wood. And we're having porridge uh, for breakfast so we'll see how that goes it's that army ration porridge got them off uh, my good old mate Foxer 51 Foxer so see how that goes should be alright uh, well I absolutely hammered it down during the night 
and I've been perfectly warm and dry and with the fire it's just been lovely really nice night really really enjoyed the night been really nice so I'll get up in a minute we'll get breakfast on and slowly start packing up just doing the one night that's all before I go I'll uh, show you around the camp I'll show you Joe's setup as well so Joe's in the hammock and I'm uh, on the ground so I'll bring you back in a bit guys and ladies just gonna have a brew just uh, just got the kettle on for a brew tell you what everyone there's no better sight a nice fire getting going and you're gonna have a brew you can't beat this Okay guys and ladies, so here's the setup. So we've got the fire here. And then, I think you can see a bit better. Configured the tarp, so it's a grouse sheet as well. If I show you from behind, it'll, it'll show it better. Ah, oh, that's better. So we configured the tarp like a grouse sheet. And we've got a big part sticking out there for the rain. So this is it from behind. So we've got the fire next to the tarp. And then we folded part of the tarp back under itself so it acts like a grouse sheet. And you're perfectly sheltered on three sides. If I come back a bit. So you're sheltered on three sides and it acts like a grouse sheet as well, like we said. So, that's the shelter and the sleep system was two wool blankets so we've got one wool blanket that I put over me and we've got the military wool blanket that I put on the on the ground then I've got the uh, inflatable pad and then we've got uh, the army roll mat and as I say this is part of the tarp that we've just folded in and then I've got an inflatable pillar and there's the tilly lamp and it's just hung off one of the reinforcement patches so and the most important bit of kit last night was the old fire lighters because everything was absolutely sopping wet and I mean sopping wet uh, so we had to use them to get the fire going uh, we had to cut some silver birch I'll show you the tree that we cut it off so this is a tree the fallen tree it's been fell here for about a year and a half so the autumn colours are here now. Beautiful. Nice being out. Okay everyone, I'll just take you over to Stokey Joe's setup. So he's just slightly up his hill and he's in an hammock. My mate Joe. Alright Joe. Morning Bribo, morning viewers. So I'll show you What's that, Joe? It's me cover for Oh, me. cover for his rucksack. And here's Joe's rucksack. God, that's a, a beast, that, Joe. What is it? A carry more? Carry more sabre. Carry more sabre. God. 
That is a good one, that, isn't it? Good old Joe, carry more SF. And here's his Tatonka tarp, his uh, canvas tarp, and he's in the hammock. And he's got the he's got the snug pack under quilt. He's got a fancy gadget here. What's these, Joe? Look at this fancy. Uh, UK hammocks. Ah, UK hammocks. Clips. Very nice. <coughs> Have you put all these rigs on? Yeah. Hey, that's really good, that. So he's, he's adapted the, the pullers with these little ring things and they just clip. Thimbles, I think they're called. What, sorry? Thimbles. Thimbles. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it saves wearing plastic. Yeah, so there's Joe's setup and his axe and his uh, Ray Bears saw was indispensable last night. And. And it is uh, the best bit of bushcraft kit you can get. The, bag. the good old Crusader system. Belted. Hi everyone. So that's it for another overnight camp. So that was November, but I'm glad my mate Stokey Joe come. I was going to come on my own. Uh, but I'm glad he's come. We've had a right laugh. Good company. Nice fire, great food, uh, and just being out, listening to the sounds. And when it hammered down with the rain, brilliant. Absolutely superb. Can't beat it. Just getting out and enjoying it. You know, and just listening to the sounds, the owls, and the rest of the wildlife. And that's why I do it for. Uh, as I say, I'm no bushcrafter, I'm no survivalist, but I just enjoy being out. I know enough just to get by, and that'll do me, that'll do me. And when my grandsons are a bit older, they'll be coming out with me and doing the overnighters. And I'll teach them what bit of knowledge I know. And obviously, if they want to take it further, then, you know, each to their own, each to their own. I don't start fires with flint and steels, especially in this weather. I've done it in the summer, but especially in this weather now. Good old firelight does me. And, oh, the cotton balls in the old Vaseline, they work as well. But every piece of wood was ringing wet yesterday. We had to chop the birch down and good job, job. Um, Joe had his, his book saw and his splitting axe. Uh, you know, indispensable last night, that. Really coming to its own, really coming to its own. When you've got to get through thick logs to get to the dry bits, uh, really coming to its own. So. Probably another lesson learnt, really. Every time you go out, you're learning little things. Or could I do this a different way? Could I do this a better way? And you only ever find out by actually getting out there. You know, YouTube's a brilliant medium. And it's great for learning. But, you know, getting out is uh, a thing that you cannot... Uh, substitute for experience and going and visiting these woodlands and getting a bit of nature inside you and a bit of cold weather, a bit of warm weather and a bit of snow and rain and, and how do I protect myself from the wind and stuff like that. It just comes from doing it, it really does. Even if you're just going on a day walk and you take a little mini tarp, you know, you'll find out which way the wind's coming and after a bit you can read situations with weather, uh, so you know, get down into a valley so the, the wind comes above you, 
and stuff like that but you don't want to be in a valley when it's leathering it down with rain because the rain will follow down so usually when it's raining I try to get a bit higher up so the rain it, you're not ending up in a bog basically but that comes from just getting out and doing it just get out and do it and enjoy it even if you're just going for the day just get out and just enjoy being outside I love it and uh, as I say this woodland I usually come on my own but I say Stokey Joe been with me a couple of times now and Alskitronic's been once uh, but if there's any of you who are quite near where I am in the Peak District or you want to travel over and do an overnight camp I'll, I'll come out with you so, uh, and you know we can learn off each other and that's that's what it's about really enjoying it and learning so that's it for for this edition of an overnighter and it, you can tell I had my hair cut it was getting on my nerves I always keep it short it was, oh, it was driving me mad camp buzzer sweating like a pig uh, but it's done now whacked off and uh, so we're virtually packed up now just got to drop the tarp and then get home so thank you for watching everyone and uh, all the best so we'll see you again bye for now